It always is a love failure. Because love never fails. So when there's a failure in your Christian life, when you're dealing with people and you're dealing with a church family, it always is a Christian love failure. You got that? The biggest threat to Fellowship Baptist Church, as we say all the time, is not false doctrine. The biggest threat to Fellowship Baptist, because we're, we're on that all the time. The biggest threat to Fellowship Baptist Church is not finances, because we know that you're going to give. The biggest threat to Fellowship Baptist Church is not government restraints, even though we know that's coming. The biggest threat to Fellowship Baptist Church is a lack of agape love and phileo love and brotherly love that we've been talking about the last several weeks. If we don't love like we're supposed to love, listen to this, we are just performers on Sunday. We are just stage actors. We are just public speakers. And get this one, we're just doing community service. And I'm not opposed to somebody coming to church to do community service. I encourage that. But here, listen to this, as servants of the Lord to the local church, we are not doing community service. But without love, you might as well call it community service. Someone, some uh, philosopher used this phrase, and I think it's very healthy for the theme of this message. Ready? Some maintain that Christianity has failed. Some maintain that Christianity has failed. The author said, it would be more correct to say it hasn't failed. It just has very rarely ever been tried. Some would maintain that Christianity has failed. And you say, no, 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 Christianity cannot fail. It isn't Christianity that has failed. They have, there's just Christians who have failed to show the love that the Bible commands us to show. Come on, you understand that? So they say, oh, Christianity, and you hear all the time, oh, Christianity, it hasn't done nothing for society. Come on, there's nothing to that. And they say, wait, 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 wait. Christianity hasn't failed. The Bible hasn't failed. Now, we may have failed of playing it out in the field, but it has not failed. It just very rarely has ever been tried. Let that not be said of Fellowship Baptist Church. Come on, listen up. Let that not be said of Fellowship Baptist Church that Christianity has never been tried here. There's, I, I'll say again, there's got to be a place where people can go to and say, they're not hypocritical there. They're not fake there. Come on, there's got to be a place where people come to and say, there's something different about that church. Hey, they might yell. They may, come on, somebody help me out. They may sweat and stomp around. They may say amen and wave their Bibles. But deep down, there's something different about that church. And it better be because they know that we're not hypocritical and fake in our love for one another. There's got to be a church that people come to in this town. There's got to be a church and a place they go, hey, listen, Pastor Mark will love you, and that Sunday school teachers will love you. Hey, there's got to be, hey, you know it's true, you bring a visitor to church, and there's certain people in here you just want to invite them to, or uh, introduce them to. Amen. Come on, you know it's true. Hey, you're like, come on here, I want you to introduce this person to it. Come here, i got to show you this person, because you know they're going to love on them. Yeah. This church is so loving, when you're sick, you don't come, because you know you're going to get loved on. Yeah. Somebody help me out right there. Come on, somebody help me out. You know that's true. They, they, hey, you, you go to a church? Yeah. Is it fellowship about this church? Yeah, don't go there. They're going to love on you there. Somebody help me out right there. That's good. There's got to be a church where people love each other. There's got to be a church where they're not hypocritical. There's got to be a place where somebody says, I'm going to go to church and I want, hey, listen, the message doesn't have to be lovey-dovey because we know love isn't that way. Love doesn't tolerate evil. But there's got to be a place, hey, where people know that's my brother. That's my sister. That's my brother. That's my sister in Christ. Yeah. They might not use the right O-ring. They might not use the right uh, uh, washer. But bless God, they make it work. <laughs> Come on, somebody help me out. That's good. So what are some of these manifestations of love? Well, we told you what they are. Look at verse number nine. Some of these manifestations of love is abhor that which is evil. If you put up or around evil, you don't know what godly love is. Cleave to that which is good. That means come to church, read your Bible, give tracts out, tell others about Jesus Christ. That's what it means. I like what somebody said. They went to Kaiser the other day. They said, man, I found a tract there at Kaiser. Said, Bless God. Yeah, the great physician is there. Somebody help me out. Look at it, it says in verse number 10, be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love. That kindly affection is a family love. Ken, that's what it is. Hey, we're a family here. Whether you know it or not, we're a family here. And verses number 3 through 8 tells us that we are to participate one to another. I like what someone said to me the other uh, last Sunday as they're walking out. They said, listen, we're only going to be here for five weeks. Get us in the game. Yeah. We're only going to be here for five more weeks. We're moving, but get us in the game. I like that. 
Man, praise God, they wanted to do something. Hello, that's good right there. That's good. And so we've got this family love, and part of it is a body, and this is a body of Christ, and this body is made up by individuals, and this body is to love one another. Verse number 10, not only the brotherly love, but preferring one another, you, not me, you instead of me. Come on, you instead of me. You want that seat? Take that seat. Come on, we're just laying the groundwork here. It's a really simple message. Come on, you instead of me. Didn't we talk about that last week? Look at verse number 11. Not slothful in business. That means don't be lazy in your love. Go after it. Hey, look, it says fervent spirit. Hey, of course I'm going to be excited around here. I'm going to light myself on fire and you're going to come and watch me burn. Hey, I'm going to be fervent in spirit. Say what you want to say. I'm going to get excited about the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's a book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God. Yeah, that's the book I stand on. I'm not going to be, I'm going to be fervent. I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to serve the Lord. And guess how I serve the Lord? By serving you. Why? Because I love. That's why you serve the Lord, because you love one another. You can't, you can't love God without loving others. So if you have, a, if you have agape love, the God love, you're going to serve one another. Look what it says there in verse number, uh, rejoice in hope. We, we hope and we believe. Like I've been teaching in Sunday school about confrontation. We know that no matter what issue we have, we're going to work it out. See, most people don't know how to handle confrontation, but we know that no matter what issue we have, we're going to work it out. Like we said, aren't you glad your mom didn't kick you out just because you didn't feed the dog? Come on. Oh, yes, she did. No, that was just the excuse she used. She was tired of you a long time ago. <laughs> Patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of the saints, given to hospitality. We talked about that, distributing. Remember, that's fellowship. That means, hey, this is distributing Baptist church. That word distributing is the same word as fellowship. If you truly are a fellowship of believers, that means you care for one another. If you're hungry in here and you're truly hungry and you're not spending your money on stupid things and you're hungry, let somebody know. Let me know. Yes. If you're hungry, we don't want anybody to go hungry. So let me give you some more. Let me give you some more characteristics or manifestations of love in the church family. By the way, this is talking about a church family. Look what it says in verse number uh, 14. Bless them which persecute you. Well, I'll be. (laughs) Well, I'll be. Bless them which persecute you. Isn't that amazing? When we're dealing with others... And we're dealing with a a family of believers. You and I have to realize people are going to persecute us. They're going to talk bad about us. Can you believe that? People in the church family are going to talk bad about each other. You're going to get persecuted. You know why you get persecuted? Because you're because you're separated. You're doing something for God. Persecution is not because you wear different kinds of uh, uh, color shoes, or if, if you wore two different shoes and somebody laughs at you, that's not persecution. Persecution comes when you are doing something for the Lord, and, and they mock you and ridicule you because you're separated doing something for God. Yeah. And by the way, you're supposed to be persecuted. If you're a Christian, you're supposed to be persecuted. Think it not strange, brethren, the fiery trial which is to try you. You are supposed to get persecuted. Jesus said, if they persecuted me, they'll persecute you also. Amen. And he says, one of the ways you'll know you're a disciple, one of the ways you'll know that you're a servant of God is by the fact that they do persecute you. So don't get discouraged when they persecute you. They're supposed to persecute you. But it bothers us. Because we we hear these phrases, life is fair, or life's supposed to be equality. Hey, take those words and just flush them down the toilet or the kitchen sink, whatever you want. The bottom line is there's no equality. Come on, somebody help me out. Life is not fair. It's not going to be fair. You're going to get persecuted. The more good you do, the more you'll get persecuted. That's why Satan persecutes you so that you'll stop doing good. Come on, somebody help me out. Is this on? Every time you try to do good and you stretch yourself and you give and you sacrifice and you spend all day in the park with some teenagers. Come on, somebody help me out. And you spend all day soul winning or you spend all day in winners with 30 kids. Bless God. I want to tell you, when you do that, Satan's going to attack. He doesn't want you to do good. He's going to persecute you. But wait a second, wait a second. When somebody persecutes you, it's not your job to respond back to them the way they respond to you. That's key. That's key for a Christian. If you're truly going to have an effective church life, listen up. By the way, this is your responsibility. To have an effective church life, if you're going to have an effective church life, it is responsible for you to respond differently than they respond to you. If they persecute you, you're supposed to bless them. (laughs) Isn't that hard? (laughs) We have this knee-jerk reaction. What would you say? Bam. The Bible says when they persecute you, you are to bless them. Curse them not. Curse? That means don't say back to them what they said to you. Persecute means that it it follows, it chases you. 